my students to the homework camp video. Let's jump right into this. Um, numbers 27, 28, and 29 are referring to this scatter plot over here. Um, if you want to look carefully, we have weight of a vehicle versus the length of a vehicle. So here's the weight going across. Here's the uh, length right here. Okay, so here we go. What are the units on the horizontal axis? The units on the horizontal axis would be weight in pounds. Okay, what are the units on the vertical axis? It would be length in inches right here. Okay? Very simple. Horizontal units, vertical <laughs> units. Okay? Pretty simple. I right, question 27. In the weight versus length graph, estimate the coordinates of the point of a car that weighs about 4,000 pounds. Now, the, a car that weighs a little over 4,000 is a little bit more than 210 inches. See this point here? If it's a little to the right. So a car that weighs a little more than 4,000 is a little more than 210 inches long. So I would say a car that weighs 4,000 pounds would probably be at just about approximately 210 inches. Just an estimation, okay? true. As the weight increases, the length decreases. Well, that's not true. As the weight gets higher as we go across, the length is getting larger. See, for this, or here, for 4,000 right in here is here. So as we make our way across, we're going up, not down. So that is false. 12, the length is constant as the weight increases. Now what that means is, is as the weight increases, the length stays the same. And that's false. As the weight increases, the length is actually getting higher. So that's false. This is false. This is false here. The length is not related to the weight at all. That's false. It is related. Here it is. The length tends to increase as the weight increases. And that is true. Okay? As you, as the weight increases, the length is also increasing. It is going up. Alright? Okay. 30 and 31. We're going to use the scatter plot here. It's the weight versus the gas mileage. Alright? Um, what is the value of W in this ordered pair? Now, stop and think, okay? This is your x-axis. It's the weights. We're going to call it the w-axis. This is usually <coughs> your y-axis. And we're calling that our g-axis. So we have a g-axis and a w-axis, okay? Now, in an ordered pair, what comes first? Your x and then your y, correct? Right? So, your x-axis is now the one axis, the w-axis, so this is your w-value, and your y-axis is the g-axis, so this is your g-value. So, what is the value of the w in this ordered pair? 2010. What is the value of the g? 29. Okay? Alright, moving on. Number 31, in the scatter plot, how does gas mileage tend to change as the weight increases? Well, guys, as the weight increases, the gas mileage is going down, so it decreases. That's the answer. Do you see it here, guys? As the weight goes from 2,000, the gas mileage is here, here, 2,500. 
500 is worse here. 3,500 is worse here. 4,000 is worse. So as the weight is getting higher, the gas mileage is um, decreasing. Okay. Now, how would you expect the length of a car to affect its gas mileage? Well, guys, let's go back to our first scatter plot up here. As the length went up, so did the weight. Okay, so um, if the length increases, then the weight will increase. And what did this graph right here show us? As the weight increases, the gas mileage decreases. So there it is. And the length of a car more than likely will make the gas mileage decrease because, like we learned up here, as the length increases, the weight increases, and as the weight increases, the gas mileage decreases. Okay? Alright, moving on. 67 through 70. One summer you charge $20 to mow a lawn and $10 to trim bushes. You want to make $300 in one week. Um, so, you come up with this algebra model right here to help you um, figure your earnings. X is right here. Lawns mowed. Y is bushes trimmed. Okay? First of all, I want is to solve the equation for, for y. So here we go. Do that pretty quickly. Did y equals 300. Bring your 20x over. Make it negative. Now divide everything by 10. Divide by 10. Divide by 10. Divide by 10. And we're left with y equals 30 minus 2x. Okay? 30 minus 2x. Now, use the equation in function form. This right here. It's in function form. Y is money itself. Use this equation to make a name of the values for these three values. Okay? So here we go. x, y. So this here is the answer to 67. And now this here will be the answer to 68. So we're putting in 5 for x, 10 for x, and 15 for x. So let's put a 5 in first. 2 times 5 is 10. 30 minus 10 is 20. Next, we'll put a 10 in for x. Uh, 2 times 10 is 20, so 30 minus 20 is 10. And then next we'll put a 15 in for x. 2 times 15 is 30. 30 minus 30 is 0. So there we go. Now, look at the graph to the right. Does this line up here to pass to the points from your name of the values. Well, yes. 5 and 20 is right here on the line. 10, 10 is right here on the line. And 15, 0 is right here on the line. So the answer is yes. 17. If you do not trim any bushes during the week, how many lawns we have to mow? Well, come on, guys. Think about this, okay? Bushes is what? Right here, look. Your Y. Bushes trimmed Y. So, if you don't trim any bushes, that means your Y is a what? A zero. And when your Y is zero, what is your X? 15. So, students, what this tells me here is that um, when I have zero bushes trimmed, X stands for lawns mowed. That means I have to mow 15 lawns. Which, by the way, makes sense because each lawn is $20 and 15
15 times 20 is 300, which is how much you want to make. Okay, that helps. Moving on here to numbers 16 through 63. Um, let's see. Kind of hard to read, guys. Let me uh, see what page we're on here real quick. Page 216. Here we go. Page 222. Okay, here we go. You're just going to draw my Columbus Pony on a play next month. Um, they are selling tickets for the play, and the club hopes to raise $600 from the drama fund, all right, for new costumes and stuff like that. Let X represent the number of adult tickets at $8 each, and let Y represent the number of student tickets at $5 each, okay? So, they've given you a nice model here of the situation, okay, 8x plus 5y equals 600. Now, they want us to graph this, so what I'm going to do quickly is put a 0 in for x, and get on a y-intercept, which would be 8 times 0 is 0, y would equal 120, and then I'm going to put 0 in for y, 5 times 0 is 0, 8x equals 600, and a goes into 600 75 times, okay? So, here's my y-intercept, here's my x-intercept. We'll go in increments of 5 for the x-axis, so... Students in the past, I've taught you guys to draw your lines like this, okay? But you don't want to do that because you can't have negative, um, let's see here, x is the number of um, adults that came, and y is the number of students that came. You can't have negative adults or negative children. So the graph starts here, goes right here and stops, okay? So there's the graph. Now, what is the x-intercept? Well, here's the x-intercept. What does it represent? Okay, it means, it's really simple, guys. X is your number of adults, guys, look. <coughs> How do I know that? Because, look, $8 is the charge for adults and x is being multiplied by 8, so x has to be your adult tickets, y is your student tickets, okay? So, if I have a point here that's 75, 0, that means 0 students came and 75 adults came, so it means only adults came. And there were 75. Okay, now, what is the y-intercept? 120. What does it represent? Okay, think about it, guys. Here, this order pair is 0, 120. So we have 0 adults, 120 students. So it simply means only students came. All right? Now, what are three possible numbers of adult and student tickets to sell that will help the drama club reach its goal? Well, guys, that's really pretty simple. Just put some numbers in for 
x. For example, let's put um, let's put uh, five in for x. Okay, we can say five adults come. Now watch this. Five adults came. Eight times five is forty. Bring your forty over. Make it negative. Five y equals five sixty divided by five, and we get. 100, let's see, 1, 1, 112. So there's one combination right there. Five adults, 112 students, okay? Let's increase that quite a bit. Let's say we have, let's say we have uh, 20 adults come, all right? 20 times 8 is 160. Bring your 160 over, make it negative. That leaves you with 440. And divide both sides by 5, and you get 88. So 20 adults, 88 students. So there's one combination. There's another combination. And then lastly, I could say 50 adults came. Eight times fifty is four hundred. Bring your four hundred over, make it negative. Now we're left with five y equals two hundred. Divide both sides by five, and we get forty. So another combination would be fifty adults and forty students. Okay, so any of those would work. And so there's three possible numbers of adults and students that could come in which the drama club will still reach its goal of six hundred dollars. So any of those. Alright. Okay, let's move on. Okay, students sixty four through sixty five. The direction is the same. The direction is saying you are in a marathon. When you run, you go eight miles an hour. When you walk, you go four miles an hour. Now, write an equation to show the relationship between the time that you run and the time that you walked during this course, okay? So, really not that difficult. Think about this for a second. If you walked, let's see, if you ran, we'll, um, use, we'll use R for run and W for walk, okay? Now, the time that you ran gets multiplied by 8, because remember, you're going 8 miles per hour. So if you multiply 8 times the hours um, that you ran, you'll get your distance plus Thinking about this, you're going four miles every hour, four miles per hour. So, four times the time that you walked will also give your distance, and that up, and it should be 26.2. Okay, so there we go. Now, graph this equation right here. Well, here we go. I mean, I'm going to use the once again the Double intercept method. It really doesn't matter which axis you call your W and your R. I'm going to call this my R axis, this my W axis. I'm going to put a zero in for R to get out my W intercept. A times zero is zero. Divide by four. And W equals 63 point something. So, oh, I'm just going to say 63. So we'll use increments of 5. So 63 is about right there. Okay. Now let's find the R intercept. We'll put a 0 in 4W. 4 times 0 is 0, so 8R equals 26.2. Divide both sides by 8, 
and I equals 3, 24, 22, about 3.7. Um, right there. Okay, so there we go. So, let's catch your graph. And there's a pretty good graph, okay? Now, I'm just going to find one possible running and walking time. It's just like the last problem, students, where you can pick a value to put in for R or W and then solve for the other variable. I'm going to say you ran for let's say he ran for a couple of hours to almost so two eight times two is sixteen bring the sixteen over make it a negative sixteen leaves you with ten Divide both sides by 4, and you locked 4 to 22.55. So, you could say you ran for 2 hours total, and you locked for 2.55 hours, and there you go. That will give you a total of 26.2. So there's one possible running and walking uh, um, combination, okay? Now, question number 66. If you walk for a total of one hour, how long will you have ran? Okay, so here we go. You walk for one hour. Four, bring the four over, make it a negative four, and you're left with 22.2. Divide both sides by eight, and R, R equals let's see, two, sixteen, twenty-two, approximately 2.2, approximately. All right. No, that's not right. Sorry about that. It would be, uh, it would be, uh, let's see, A goes into this uh, two times. 60, 62, B7, 8, uh, approximately 2.7 hours that you would run. So if you walked from an hour total, then you would run for 2.7 hours. Okay? So this, this equation here is really helpful. You can put in numbers for walking, get out your running, or vice versa. Okay? All right. 67 and 68. Um, let's see, I think our charges for an per person before 6, 7 per person after, after 6. The total ticket sales was 11,228. Make a graph showing the possible amount of people that came. All right? So here we go. Um, all the people that came early multiplied by four. All the people that came later get multiplied by seven. Okay. So the early people each paid four. The late people each paid seven. If you add all that up, it should equal eleven thousand two hundred twenty-eight. So how would I graph it? Well. Like I always do, put a zero in for E. Four times zero is zero. So you're left with seven L equals eleven thousand two hundred and twenty eight. Divide both sides by seven. We get one forty two six zero four. So um this is my L axis right there, or my L enters, enters up, and th then I'm going to put a zero in for L, so for E, 
plus 7, 0 equals 11,228. 7 times 0 is 0. Leaves me with 4. E equals 11,228. Divide both sides by 4. And E equals 4 goes under 11 twice. It's 32. That's 807. So there's my E intercept, okay? Now let's sketch our graph. Okay? It really doesn't matter which axis you're going, E or the L, I'm going to do this. We'll go in increments of 200, I guess. Same thing for the L axis, two, four, eight, two, four, eight, ten, two, four, ten. So that's two thousand. This would be uh, two hundred. So my L intercept, 1604,246, so right there. E intercept, 2800, so about right, there's 3,028, about right there. Oh, there's the graph right there. Now, suppose no one attends the theater before 6 p.m. How many people attend the theater after 6? Well, okay, what they're saying is, listen, they're saying no one attended the theater before 6, so no, no one came early, okay? So that means your E right here is a 0, okay? So if your E is a 0, then your L would have to be what? Well, 1,604, right? Think about it. If your E is 0, it's over here. Then how high up are you? Right here, which is 1,604, because that's the L intercept. And guys, that makes sense, because remember earlier, to find the L intercept, what did I put in for E? 0. So, no one came early. Well, that means your E is zero right here. So your L would have to be 1604. Okay? And I know that because of the L intercept being 1604. Okay? Alright, lastly, number 69. Okay. The number of people who work for the railroads from 89 to 95 are modeled by this equation right here. Okay? X represents the number of years since 1989, and Y represents the number of railroad employees in thousands. So X is the number of years since 1989. So 1989 is my zero. 1990 would be one. 1991 would be two, and so on and so forth. Some students, what this equation does for me is I can put in a number for x, which represents a year, and I will get out how many railroad employees there are in thousands, okay? So here we go. First, find the y-intercept, okay? So if I'm going to find the y-intercept, I put zero in for what? x. So if I put zero in for x, 6 plus 6, 1 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 2, 20, 0 plus 229 is 229. So the y intercept is 229. Once you look, here's the y axis. That looks just about right. Okay? 
next. But in the X, oh, what does it represent? Okay, so it represents the fact that when I'm at zero years, 1989, I had 229,000 employees. That's what it represents, okay? When I have zero years in 1989, there were 229,000 employees. Now, they want me to find the exodus apt. So where the y is, I'll put a zero. Zero equals negative 6.61x six six plus 229. Bring the 229 over, make it negative. And then students divide negative 229 by negative 6.61, and I will get a positive 34.6, okay? So, that means I don't have room here on my graph, but if I have room here on my graph, I could make this x go all the way out somewhere over here at 34.6. The line would hit the x-axis now. What does that mean? That means in 34 and a half years past 1989. So 1989 plus 34 years. In the year 2023, there will be how many railroad employees? Zero. Because I'm down here on the x-axis. So here's the x-intercept. What does it mean? It means in the year 2023, because remember, 1989 is my zero year. So 34.6 years later, so around 2023, theoretically, according to this model, there will be zero um, railroad workers left. Okay? So, there we go. Now, About how many people worked for the railroads in 1995? Well, if 92 uh, um, is represented by 3, then 95 is represented by 6. So I'll come over here, look at the 6, go up. We're looking at about 150, 200. I want to say around 160,000 people. Okay. Do I think the line of the graph would need to be a good model for the next 50 years? No, I don't, because personally, I don't think in the year, what was it we said? Um, in the year, uh, I think it was 2023. In the year 2023, there'll be zero railroad workers. And there's no way that's accurate. We're always going to need terrain. terrain to move stuff, and so, oh no, I do not think this model will continue to be a good model for the next 50 years, because there's no way in 34 years we're going to have zero workers. In fact, if we keep going 50 years, we would actually have negative railroad workers, and that's impossible to have, and so, no, this would not be a good model, okay? Guys, that's it. I hope this homework help video has been a help to you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call or email.